Hey, what's up? Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today I'm gonna teach you three unique watercolor painting exercises for all levels. At any level, I think you'll find these useful. So without further ado, let's take it to the table, get started. Okay, so the first exercise has to do with color patches. Now, this is a fun one and it's one I've been practicing for a long time, but only just recently I realized how good of an exercise it is, just regardless and in vacuum, so to speak. So what this entails is basically mixing a bit of color, for example, you see me now applying yellow, putting it on paper and then quickly cleaning up the brush, moving on to a different color and applying that. What you wanna put an emphasis on here is try to create the patches in an even way, meaning clean the brush and come back to paper before the edge dries. So try to get as even of a, of a result as possible. Try doing this from center outwards, or in this example, I'm just moving from top to bottom, generally speaking. And now I cut out all the mixing because it's not that interesting and it's not that important, but try to be quick about it enough, okay? Don't, don't be nervous or stressed to get these too quick in, but do try and get it before the edge dries. This is really useful because it trains you to work at the right pace and as fast as necessary whenever you are actually working on a painting. And it's sort of an extreme version because you keep changing the colors, which is something you won't necessarily do in a full-fledged painting, okay? Now this is it for this one, let's move on to the second exercise, which is watercolor drawing. So as the name suggests, this is a relatively simple one. What we're doing here is simply drawing with the paint. So instead of drawing with a pencil like you're used to, you're drawing using the paint directly. Now this is really cool for a couple of reasons. Generally speaking, I find that using one medium the way a different medium is used can be very beneficial. Not as a final means to a painting, not as a final result, but rather as a stepping stone to learning something useful. Let me give you an example. Oils and acrylics are painted in much more of a patchwork way, because what you do is you paint an area, then you paint a different area. It's a medium that's thicker, it's not as, as flowy as watercolor, and this leads to a different work process. Now, not to say that they can't be diluted, obviously, and especially acrylics, you can do quite a lot with them. But uh, generally speaking, the process is a little different. Bringing that process into watercolor may not create the best result or the most fluid result, but it will teach you a lot about looking at different areas, observing them, taking your time with them, and working in smaller patches as we've seen in the previous exercise. So that's just one example. There are many examples of this. Here, we're actually using it like a pencil. Now, what this does is it forces you to use the brush in ways you not, may not be uh, as familiar with because we're not very often doing this kind of a thing. You see, working with all the different directions of the brush, going from top to bottom, right to left, diagonally, cl uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, you know, all of these different shapes we're creating, the different curves, the different lines, it all forces you to really work the brush uh, fully. And this is kind of an advanced version of just practicing different brush marks. So you may have came, come across uh, an exercise that just entails doing a lot of horizontal lines or a lot of vertical lines. Think of this as an, ex as a, as a, um, an advanced version of that. Because essentially what you're doing is really working. Look at the curve, look at how I twist the brush. You're working the brush to its fullest extent more than you generally would need in a painting process. And what does this do? It's like the, this um, this idea of when you're practicing, you're going more extreme so that when it actually is time to paint, you ha you're having an easier time. You're doing something that's much more challenging. And then when you have to apply it to a finished painting, you're suddenly you have all of this experience in controlling the brush in all sorts of different ways that most people don't if they don't do this exercise. Another added benefit is notice how very naturally I'm starting to get in some places a dry texture, kind of dry brush texture that shows the paper. This will happen naturally when doing this exercise and if you're not as familiar with dry brush marks, this is a good way of practicing it or dry brush technique in general. This is a good way of practicing it without the pressure of ruining a painting because you'll just naturally find that you do it. And this is it for this exercise. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now let's move on to the third one and I call that duochrome. Now don't let the fact that we're painting the same thing confuse you or throw you off. This is a very basic one as well. What you do is you choose two different colors that 
uh, that you want to work with, which is why I call this duochrome. It's two colors. And just use these two throughout the painting. I don't care how you paint. I don't care if you use wet in wet, if you go uh, with very thin glazes and coats. I don't care about any of that, as long as you use these two colors. What I'm doing now is just directly painting it the way I see it, very a la prima, very freely. I don't care about the result. It doesn't have to be perfect. I also cut out the mixing because it's just not as important. The goal here isn't to create a specific type of painting, but rather just to focus on duochrome using two different colors. Now, uh, here's an added bonus. If you can choose two colors that seemingly may not work that well together, that's a plus. I want you to challenge yourself. Think outside the box. Go for things that aren't as obvious, okay? I want you to choose two colors that maybe feel a little awkward together as well. This example actually isn't that awkward. I'm using a pyrrole scarlet and, under, and sap green or undersea green in some cases. And what this does is, sorry, this is actually under sea green. Um, what this does is we have a very saturated red and a very muted green. These two are opposing on the color wheel and using them both with one saturated and one muted leads to a very beautiful combination. You can do the same with orange and blue. So you use a muted orange like a brown and then a saturated blue like a pure cerulean or thalo. Or you can reverse it. Use a very muted French ultramarine together with a bright beautiful yellow orange okay so using two complementary colors with one saturated one muted is a very common kind of color harmony way of approaching things but i don't even care about that choose whichever two colors you want make them awkward make them weird like one awkward combination for me that i dislike is phthalo blue and burnt sienna this doesn't work for me which is similar to what i just described earlier for some reason that cool especially if it's a more greenish uh, blue together with burnt sienna usually leads to harmonies that I don't naturally gravitate towards But for the sake of this experiment go for it Give it a try see what happens You know you may learn that a specific way of utilizing the color will work for you even if it's in a color combination You're not as accustomed to and I think doing things that don't come naturally to you is a great way of pushing the boundaries, finding your limits. Um, another strong concept that's at play here is limits. You limit yourself to just two colors. And there's a lot of magic in limiting ourselves to just a few colors and, or just one medium or, you know, forcing yourself to do things a very limited way. But anyway, this is for this one. Now let's wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you find these useful. Um, try and challenge yourself and develop these unique exercises of your own. I think this really helps expand our horizons and just get better at watercolor painting. When you try weird things, it all incorporates back to your normal style and it really enriches it, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it. If you like it, drop a comment down below, maybe share it with someone you know will find it useful. It means the world to me and it helps me reach more people. Thank you so much and I will see you again in the next one real soon.